Hi, everyone. So my name's Jill, and I'm a marine biology student here at UMB in St. John. And while I've been studying here, I've actually fallen in love, and I'd really like to introduce you guys to them. They are amazing. They're charismatic, gentle, intelligent. They're a world traveler, and they're huge. I'm talking 150,000 kilograms. I'm talking about whales, of course, who have grown to be some of my favorite animals on the entire planet. They range in size from four and a half feet to larger than any dinosaur that roamed the Earth at 109. Not only are they some of the largest animals that ever existed, they're also some of the loudest. The blue whale's calls can be heard up to 1,000 miles away from where they were originally made. Entire populations of male humpbacks sing songs that are complex, last up to 30 minutes, and change ever so slightly every single year, depending on where that whale went. There's some species of whale that they believe can live up to or over 200 years of age. And one particular species, the Culver's beaked whale, can dive to a depth of 2,992 meters for two hours. That's insane. <laughs> all in all, they're pretty cool animals. These videos you see playing right here are of humpback whales off the eastern coast of Australia. They're provided by Humpbacks and High Rises, a non-for-profit organization working to collect behavioral data on marine mammals, which is then transcribed into scientific data and used for marine conservation. Now, I actually had the pleasure to intern at Humpbacks and High Rises earlier this summer, and working so closely with these amazing animals really solidified my love for them and made me want to protect them even more than I already did. But Australia is pretty far away. So if you're not convinced just yet, let me bring it a little bit closer to home for you guys and introduce you to someone who spends their summers just about an hour away from here in the Bay of Fundy. This is Sedge. Sedge is a humpback whale that's frequented the Bay of Fundy for a couple years now. He's our most easily identifiable whale. You can see he's got a big chunk of his dorsal missing. He's also my personal favorite whale. Now that I've introduced you to these amazing animals, you're probably thinking, OK, why do I care? As it turns out, these whales that we don't often see because they live in the deep seas actually have a huge role in our lives. In the words of marine biologist and whale conservationist Asha DeVos, these animals that we see as charismatic, beautiful creatures are actually vital ecosystem engineers. They play a large aid in the maintenance, stability, and health of our oceans. And through that, provide services to us as humans. Now, they provide these services one of two ways, through their fecal matter or their rotting carcasses. <laughs> Yum, right? Throughout a whale's life, they dive to deep waters to feed and then come to the surface layers to breathe. While doing so, they release enormous fecal plumes, known as whale pumps. These whale pumps contain essential limiting nutrients, like iron and nitrogen, that can't often be found at the surface layers. Being brought here, they stimulate the growth of phytoplankton, microscopic marine organisms that are photosynthetic. Now, phytoplankton are the base of every single marine food chain. And not only that, but scientists estimate that roughly 70% of our world's oxygen comes from marine plants like phytoplankton. So more whale poop means better animals, more healthier ecosystems, and more air for us to breathe. These whales are also responsible for nutrient cycling over long horizontal distances. The humpback whale travels 16,000 or more kilometers every single season, traveling from their colder feeding waters to their calving waters and then back again. There was one gray whale, a female, who was tagged off the coast of Russia, traveling all the way down to the coast of Mexico, staying for a couple hours and then turning around and heading right back. That's 22,000 kilometers in a single trip. That's crazy. <laughs> Even after their death, these whales are helpful to us. You see, when a whale dies, its carcass sinks. This is what's known as a whale fall. These whale falls can provide nutrients and shelter for hundreds of deep sea species, like the deep sea sea cucumber, the thorny head fish, and the sea anemone that you see here. Without these whale falls, these species that are dependent and specialized for them could die out before we even know about them. And who knows how that would affect our ecosystem. But more importantly than that, when these whales sink, they act as transport 
for carbon that is in our atmosphere. They take it to the deep waters of the ocean, known as carbon sinks. In a typical 40-ton carcass, there's two metric tons of carbon, and there can be over 8.2 metric tons in larger carcasses. A research study was done at the University of Maine in 2010 that, said, that looked at the effect that whaling would have on our carbon output. Andrew Pershing said after this that the one century of whaling is equivalent to the burning of 70 million acres of forest or letting 28,000 SUVs run for 100 years straight. It's a lot of carbon. These whales are an integral part of our marine ecosystem and in turn, our terrestrial environment. Without them, more carbon gas would be released in the atmosphere than already is being. But why is that a bad thing? I am so glad you guys asked. <laughs> I'd now like to introduce you to the second giant of our world, this one a lot scarier than our whales, climate change. I know, I know. Climate change is something we're all at least vaguely familiar with. It's a pretty big buzzword right about now. But what exactly is climate change? Climate change is defined as the change of long-term weather patterns. The most familiar you may be with this is the term global warming. So to explain how it happens quite simply, the Earth has its atmosphere around us that acts as a thin cloth. It's what keeps the Earth livable. And when the sun shines its rays down, most of that gets bounced back into outer space. But a portion of that gets trapped underneath this thin cloth. Now this is a good thing. This is our layer of insulation. It's what keeps us from being more than just a frozen rock hurling through space. But we as humans alter the composition of this atmosphere every single day by burning fossil fuels like oils and gases, which releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide. These greenhouse gases build up underneath our atmosphere, and instead of it acting like a thin cloth, it's now acting as a thick, heat-trapping blanket. This has resulted in a general heating and warming trend of the surface of the Earth, both on land and in sea. Since the year 1900, the Earth's global temperature has risen by almost a full degree Celsius. So what does that mean for our oceans? And what does that mean for us? Our oceans play a much larger role in our life than many of us realize. They cover two thirds of our entire planet. They're the driving force behind our weather patterns. They moderate our climate and they provide us with millions of job opportunities. To date, the ocean has taken in 25%, a full quarter of all the carbon dioxide we've emitted into the atmosphere. I mentioned carbon sinks earlier. Carbon sinks work to trap and hold carbon to keep it out of the atmosphere. The ocean's been doing a pretty great job of this, but we keep pumping out more and more and more of this gas, and it's dissolving into our oceans and changing their chemistry. Now, luckily for all of you here today, I don't have time to get into the nitty gritty details of the chemistry. But what you need to know <laughs> is that more carbon dioxide in the water means we have a lower pH. That means we have more acidic oceans. This process is known as ocean acidification. Climate change is equally as evil twin brother. Climate change has been a focus of scientists for well over two decades now. If you look at this uh, time series I have displayed here, the topmost purple line is the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere as a direct result of human activities. Just below it, the darker blue line shows a steady increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the surface levels of the seawater. You can see that it's increasing at a very similar, to rate, very similar rate as the line just below it is decreasing. That would be our seawater's pH. Lower pH can affect us all the way up the food chain. Smaller invertebrates like crabs, pseudopodia, mussels, rely on ions in the water to form their shells and their homes, which they can't live without. This change in pH is making those ions less available. But ocean acidification isn't the only thing happening, happening in our oceans as a direct result of climate change. Extreme changes in global temperature have been observed worldwide. And this is seeing a, a change in distribution and migration of species. A prime example of this, the North Atlantic right whale. At one point, Cape Cod Bay was so full of right whales, you could walk from one side of the bay to the other just by stepping on their backs. Now, their numbers are somewhere between three and 400. 
They were one of the main victims of whaling, earning their name the right whale because they were the right whale to hunt. But now these already endangered animals are facing a new threat, climate change. This change in temperature has resulted in a shift of location of their food, small schooling fish and krill. And similar to the way that we follow the scent of freshly baked cookies or pies to the kitchen, these guys follow their food, taking them into literal unfamiliar waters. In these foreign waters, these already endangered species are more susceptible to potential threats like ship strikes and entanglement. A change in pH and temperature will result in a change of species distribution and migration of all species that manage to, to um, survive this mass extinction we're in right now. The oceans are huge to us. They're so important. We rely on them for everything, from the food we eat, our weather patterns, to the jobs we work, and all the way up to the air that we breathe. You'd think we'd treat it a little bit better than we have been. Ocean acidity right now has increased by 26%. That's an acidification rate 10 times faster than anything we've seen in the last 55 million years. The last time something even slightly similar to this happened, it coincided with a mass extinction event, which is where we're at right now. These two things that I've introduced to you today have, are both massive entities that have a huge impact on our lives, but they're easy to forget about while you're going about your day-to-day -day tasks. You're not thinking about the whales while you chop your vegetables for Taco Tuesday, and you're not thinking about climate change while you're waiting for your new favorite Netflix show to load. Instead, we forget about them. But forgetting about these massive entities goes hand in hand with forgetting about the little things that we do every single day that affects them. Little things like grabbing an extra plastic bag when you don't need one, using any reusable cups, but not using them enough. Instead, we use these plastic lined Tim Hortons cups and toss them out every single morning. I love these oceans. I love these whales. And I want my children and their children to have a chance to fall in love with them. If we don't do something to stop our destructive ways now, not only will they not have the chance to fall in love with the oceans, I fear they won't even have the chance to call planet Earth home. I urge you today to think about things twice. Think about that plastic cup that you're using. Think about that plastic water bottle in the store. Think about it floating in the ocean. About the cigarette butts tossing out your window as you fly down the highway. About the fast fashion you're buying that's not gonna last. Think about all these things that you're doing to affect our climate change and our ocean acidity. When you leave here today, I hope you keep thinking about the whales. You keep thinking about climate change. And you keep thinking that there's things that you can do, and the person sitting next to you can do, and the person next to them. If we keep thinking about these little changes that every single one of us make, it will remind us that we can make a difference. And all these little things, when done enough by enough people and often enough, have the power to change the world. Thank you.